What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be working on the nasty red here today, of course, because you guys asked for this, so we're gonna start working on it today. The day I picked this truck up, I bought some speakers for it because the door speakers, let me see if I can show you how they sound. There. Essentially, the speaker is kind of fuzzy on that side, and then on this side, there's no speaker at all. And I also want to fix that button, so we're going to get to taking the door panels off and getting to work. But while we're working on the door panels and stuff, I think I'm going to take some of this stuff right here. Engine degreaser, heavy duty gel. So we're going to see if this stuff actually works and get this engine degreased and shined up and hopefully looking a lot better. We're going to apply this, let it sit for a little bit while we work on this door speaker, getting this swapped out, and then hopefully we can wipe that down and it looks so much better under the hood, just like it used to when everything was brand new. And I surely hope you guys don't forget to leave plenty of likes on these videos with Nasty Red because you guys leaving all those comments and guilting me into buying this truck is the only reason why it's even back on the channel right now. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is where we're going to start with the degreasing. Most of it's not that terrible, but it does have a lot of dirt and grime and most of the degreasing I'm going to try to get down in behind the manifold there and below there and then uh, after a little bit wipe it all up. So much cleaner, so much better. Everything's so shiny and glistening. I was gonna apply that and then leave it on there for a while, but I applied it and then like after two minutes, it looked like it was already starting to look way better. So I just wiped it off. So on to the next step. Here's the old one in the door here. Let me see if I can move my phone around here a little better. There's the old factory door speaker right there. And um, this is one of those things, like I said, we just never got around to finishing, never got around to fixing. So we're gonna try to get that swapped out here. I got some Pioneer door speakers, six by nines. We're gonna try to get these ones taken off here. So here's actually some wiring that came with it. Old speaker versus new speaker. Pioneer should sound way better than no sound at all. Uh, they did actually give you two sets of wiring harnesses. So all I'm gonna do is snip the wiring right there, splice the wires together, maybe use a couple wire nuts, uh, tape it all up, and then use these connector ends, which will plug into these ends right here and the wiring is color coordinated. The colors are different, but the colors have certain meanings like white and black is gonna be power versus solid black is obviously gonna be ground. That's pretty standard. Uh, and then in terms of this one, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm gonna take the guess that the red and brown is gonna be your power and the solid green is your ground, but we'll find out. If it doesn't work, then we'll just switch the wires around and that's the obvious choice. Well, we got the door speaker in and here's the test. The temperature. It did kick on and work totally fine, but the truck's kind of funny about how the radio works. The radio is kind of funny, um, comes and goes. I promise the speakers work, okay? I promise they work, except for the original head unit occasionally does not kick on which i'm guessing is a problem because if it doesn't kick on you can't really listen to anything but we do have 
a new third brake light for this truck and I'm gonna show you that. So what we're gonna do is actually pop the screws out of this third brake light and put the new one in and just clean up the rear end here a little bit. And just like that, we've got a new third brake light. It wasn't necessarily something that we absolutely needed because you mostly don't even see it much because of the rest of the bed lights here with the flatbed, but it's still something I wanted to swap out because that old one was just looking pretty nasty. It's the original and it's looking pretty, pretty old. And another thing that has needed to be done on this truck for quite some time is the exhaust is needing fixed. And when I say the exhaust needs fixed, I mean, Look how low the thing freaking hangs. I mean, it is really low. Now it does look extra low because there's no skirt and no bedside, but this exhaust is dangling super low. And that's because one of the rubber grommets here actually broke in half. So we're gonna try to figure out a way here real quick to resuspend this exhaust better than where it's at right now. So we're gonna get to that right now and hopefully we can find a fairly easy solution to get this thing suspended the way it's supposed to be. Now say what you want, call it what you want. I say it works. Had some wire in the shop. So I grabbed some wire, fished it through two times around. And then I took two opposite ends and I spiraled it around while holding this up as tight as I could all the way until they both met with about two inches left. And then I twisted them together like so. And, uh, pretty freaking tight it's pretty solid i mean it's, it's definitely not coming off there so i don't know about you guys i'm uh, i'm pretty satisfied with that as a temporary solution you know i don't have any exhaust hangers on hand and i also don't have a welder and i don't know how to weld even if i did have one so in the meantime uh that will definitely help from this thing tracking on the floor rosine there's the exhaust now so much better i mean the thing was freaking like dangling down and almost touching the floor. This is about as high as I should have it, so when we hit bumps and stuff, it doesn't, you know, hit the freaking leaf packs there. But I mean, it uh, definitely, definitely a lot better sitting there than where it was. I don't know if I showed you, but we did also get that door lock switch fixed so that it doesn't fall down in there anymore. Nasty Red is on a two and a half inch front leveling kit, 33 by 1250s and 20 by 12s. Rosine here is on a five inch rough country lift with a front two and a half inch spacer stacked on top of the lift on 35 by 1250s and 20 by 12s. Both trucks are running Anthem wheels, but you can see just how much bigger Rosine is. I mean, Rosine is huge. Now the district's obviously parked back a couple feet further. so gonna make this thing look even bigger but it really is just a huge huge truck in comparison if you guys want to see the difference between a five inch with a leveling kit up front or a leveling kit on a second gen i mean it makes nasty red look like a freaking sandbox truck i mean <laughs> rosine i mean rosine is just huge and guys do not miss out on 10x entries that are live right now every one dollar gets you 10 entries towards winning this truck until September 13th, then 10X is gone. Or if you want to get 20X entries, if you sign up for our monthly subscription mystery boxes, you always get 20X entries automatically every single month with the mystery box set to your door every single month. So either 20X entries if you sign up for a mystery box subscription or 10X on anything else in the store, but that deal does end and it will be going to 1X after September 13th. We're actually gonna do a Q&A here, but I'm gonna get my camera mounted up here so we can have it hands-free on the GoPro filming. And then I can just go through the questions easily on my phone or not have to go back and forth between my phone and reading questions and go back to filming and reading questions and go back to filming. And it just would be a very complicated and sucky situation. So we're gonna get this GoPro hooked up and then get on the road. Top questions. Let's get on, let's get on the road here. Let's do that. I'm gonna pick my two top questions from my YouTube post and my two top questions from my Instagram post asking for Q&A questions. So we're gonna do two of each. That way we can split it up a little bit, make it a little bit fair, not just like only do Instagram or only do YouTube, you know what I mean? So, um, and if you don't follow me on Instagram, then, you know, you're missing out on some stuff, but no big deal, it's whatever. I'm gonna try to get the ones that have either the most likes or the most interest in getting an answer looking back at all the trucks you built do you regret any purchase of any particular truck the only truck ha ah, man he didn't say giveaway he said of just all the trucks total the truck i regret buying the absolute 
most is going to be my very first truck I ever bought. It was my white, I believe it was a 96 12 valve. And that, that guy was so shady. It was my first diesel I ever bought. I didn't know what I was looking for. I didn't know anything about 12 valves. I didn't know anything about, you know, Dodge truck frames and bodies and where to look for for rot and rust. And, you know, this guy was so shady. And I didn't know, I didn't know any better at the time. I didn't know anything about Dodge trucks, you know. And so he just said, well, if you want me to go along with you with my trailer to help pick it up, I can do that. But I don't really know what to look for. And so, you know, here I am thinking, well, man, it's a Cummins, man, it's a Cummins, it's a good truck, it's a Cummins. Well, yeah, the, the engine was great. The rest of the truck around it was falling apart. So that's where it got a little bit complicated. So I bought this 96 12 valve, and the guy said, let's meet at 5 o'clock. And it's like, I don't know, I want to say it's like uh, late September. So I'm there at 5. Ah, oh, man, I'm sorry. It's going to be about an hour. At 6. Hey, man, where's your ETA? Ah, it's probably going to be closer to 7. Like, you've got to be kidding me. And then, like, 7.30, I'm like, dude, where are you at? We're going to, we're going to have to head out. He's like, ah, oh, I'm right around the corner. Okay. How convenient. The sun's just starting to go down. Can't hardly see anything now. And he gets there, and what he had told me is, oh, the truck doesn't have much rust on. It's, it's fairly clean, you know, and whatever. And when I saw it, I was just, I don't know what I was thinking of. My mind was in YouTube land, and I was thinking, oh, man, I'm just thinking I'm going to be able to film so many YouTube videos. And all, every time I found a problem with the truck, I thought, oh, but I can fix that on YouTube. Thinking, like, YouTube was going to, like, make me rich or something just filming videos, and that this was just going to always just somehow work out. And so I'm looking at the truck. He wanted $9,500 for it. had no rockers on both sides cab corners were starting to come out the bed had some bubbling holes in the frame that were the size of a baseball in like two different spots that i ended up having to pay to get fixed that was almost two grand to have a frame shop cut and patch which they said they absolutely do not recommend doing but i didn't really know what else to do at the time live and learn uh it just so many things wrong with it but that truck i didn't get any better price on it i paid the full 9500 and I don't even know why. I think I was just caught up in it's a Cummins. It's a nice. It's a, it's a Cummins small valve. You know, it's you know the price is good. Like you know, like which it really was not at the time. I just didn't know my research, so I totally regret buying that truck. It did suck. It was not fun to say the least buying that truck because it was just a pit, and I would have had to dump another eight grand into it to just get the body where I wanted it and that still wouldn't have fixed the frame and so you know it, it just sucked all around I ended up selling it and getting most of my money back out of it except for everything that I had in bills and tires and everything I had in the framework and I take it back I pretty much got out of it what I originally paid for it but I didn't get anything out of it in terms of my wheels and tires and you know whatever else work I did to it it was just kind of like cut my losses and move on 12 valve or 24 valve somebody asked I'm going to say 12 out just because, um, just because I'm more familiar with 12 valves and I love working on 12 valves and some guys say, oh, well, 12 valve 12 guys only love 12 valves because they're so easy to work on and you don't have to be very smart to work on them and say what you want. They're, I think they're just super reliable, super user friendly. And I personally don't mind owning something that's older and not as advanced or technological if it means it's more simple and I can work on it myself very easily. Parts are way cheaper because it's all mechanical. All around, I just feel like they're one of the best options in terms of a diesel, like in terms of the older stuff, and that's just my preference. I don't know where it went, but I thought somebody asked me, would you buy a 6.0 Power Stroke and then add like three or four likes on it? Um, and the answer to that would be probably not anytime soon. I don't know, guys. I just, I don't like buying things I don't know anything about. And I don't like promoting things as being like an amazing, reliable, solid truck. If I do not actually believe that myself and I don't actually have that conviction. I mean, there's some guys that own 6.0s that they swear by them being the most reliable, the best sounding, the you know, the whatever like the best
best truck Ford ever built. I personally do not believe that, and therefore I do not buy them and promote them for that reason. And that's just it's just me. You know, I got a buddy that he was like, "Oh, six O's are the best. Six O's are the best." The only reason six O's had problems is because people didn't know how to take care of them, and just basically blaming all of the owners that had horrible, catastrophic issues with six O power strokes. Oh, it's just it's just the owners and maintenance. If you just do all your regular maintenance, you don't have any problems with them. And it's like. I don't know if I really believe that, you know, um, but maybe, you know, I, you know, to, I just, I don't know. To me, over the span of all different brands and vehicles, ownership type is going to vary, but it's, you're probably going to have just about the same, same amount of people that take care of their stuff like crazy with Cummins diesels as you are people who take care of their stuff like crazy with power stroke diesels. Or six O's versus twelve valves, you know, and you don't have near as many people saying that the twelve valve engine itself. I'm not talking about transmissions, how the bodies hold up, and something like that. They all rust away at some point if you don't keep them clean. I'm just saying, I just feel like you don't have near as many people ripping on the Cummins engines as you do like six four power strokes and six O power strokes. And that feels like the only people who really love the six O power strokes are the people that own them until they blow up on them and then they're like oh dude i never should have bought it and i'm like okay you know like i mean i could have told you that was gonna happen for me personally guys i i don't buy stuff that i'm not confident in and even if i bought one and it was a great truck for a long time for me personally if i don't know anything about them I don't want to buy it as my next giveaway truck and try to promote it as something that I would drive if I wouldn't actually drive it and be confident in it. And I hope you guys can understand that. Um, if I knew everything about 60 power strokes and power stroke pieces in general, working on them and stuff, that'd be different. Maybe I'd be like, okay, I've seen a lot of these. This one's built right, I can promise you. But I'm not in that boat. So, therefore, I can't honestly promote it and I can't tell you that I'm confident in it. Would you ever build a giveaway for the perfect work truck slash tow vehicle and daily driving, etc., etc., etc.? That's a lot of different builds in one build. Um, honestly, for a giveaway truck, yeah. If I was going to do one for a giveaway truck, that would be like the perfect daily driver and build. It would honestly be like Nasty Red. I mean, this thing has got compounds. It's got an HX35 over an S475. The thing, I don't, we don't know actual numbers on it, but I would say on a dyno, the thing probably makes between five and 600 horsepower. Could be closer to five or in the middle, somewhere in there. It's a great daily driver because it's not purpose built. Kind of like the white truck, it is purpose built. Like that is a street monster. It's a drag truck, it's not a tow truck. This, it's got that little HX35 for that quick, slow, low speed spooling, you know, but it's got that big turbo for when that little turbo can't take it anymore and it dumps off over onto the big one and then the big one can take on the load if you're like doing some heavy you need some heavy pulling some serious boost pressure build up i mean it's just a perfect setup and it's not laggy if you're going slow like i'm going at like a thousand rpm you know 30 miles per hour and it's not like dumping smoke because it's just one big turbo that you have to stay in it all the time it's like it's totally fine now if i want to floor it obviously it'll smoke a little bit while it's trying to build boost on that s 75 but you know it still gets up and moves because it has that small turbo to carry the weight until it spools up the big one so i mean this is this i would say would be the perfect daily slash tow truck um for a giveaway we'll have to see what we end up doing but i feel like we've done a couple that were fairly similar we did that dually that was very nice to drive truck that also had a push a compound kit and stuff i mean that truck was that truck was awesome. I love that one. That was a good daily and good tow truck. Okay, here's a 6 0 comment. It was on YouTube, my bad. Would you ever consider doing a 6 0? And I just kind of gave you the whole spiel on why I probably will not do it anytime soon, at least not as a truck to give away just because I don't trust them. But if I was going to do it for experimental purposes, maybe, sure. And here's another guy. I'm a Ford guy. I'd like to see you do a 6 4 or 6 0 because I think they're both good engines and sound awesome. I think they're both the worst engines Ford's ever released in one of their pickup trucks. And I do think they sound awesome. I do not think they're amazing engines. And you gotta define how you categorize it as an amazing engine. 
I wouldn't call it an amazing engine only because of reliability problems. There might be an amazing engine in terms of ease of building or high power with not much done to it. Or, I mean, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know for sure. All I'm going to say is it depends on how you categorize it as amazing. It's an amazing engine as in, as, as in it's easy to build a lot of power on it or amazing as in it's reliable. When I hear somebody say an amazing engine, I instantly think they think it's super reliable. And for those reasons, I would have to disagree. On average, the number of likes you see on pictures of the giveaway truck that we're giving away that month, I don't know why it is, but whenever a giveaway goes live for a truck, the amount of likes that that truck will get on Instagram goes way down. Like. If, I'll po if I post a picture of Nasty Red, it'll get four, five, six, seven thousand likes, right? If it was a giveaway truck, it would get like however many people roughly have entered that giveaway or are going to enter that giveaway, give or take, is about how many people will like that picture, which it's kind of odd how that math works out, but it's actually worked out almost spot on forever since we started doing giveaways. Like, it's really weird. Like... It just is like if we if I post a picture of a third gen right now, however many likes it gets is usually about how many people are going to end up entering that giveaway by the time it's done. And I'm talking about like total people, not how many total orders, but total people will place orders to win that truck. So it's kind of weird, but I mean if you if you get on my Instagram and you look at the likes of the current giveaway truck that's live right now, on average, however many likes that truck gets when it's currently live. It's weird, but it seems to have worked out pretty much every month. Is about how many people slash orders, give or take, you're going to see, you're going to have enter in on that truck. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you guys want to get entered to win our current giveaway truck, remember, you can get entered to win that truck at lnpgear.com. And every $1 right now is going to get you 10 entries towards winning that truck plus $5,000 cash. And then it's going down to 1x entry. If you never want to miss out on our best entry deal, and you just want to play it safe and make sure you always get 20x, sign up for our monthly mystery boxes. All you do is add it to your cart, you check out, you get a mystery box with different items in it every single month, and you always get 20x entries for our current giveaway, guaranteed. Mystery box subscribers always get 20x entries because you're making that faithful, loyal commitment to supporting the brand every single month by subscribing to one of those and it means the world to us we want to repay you by making sure you always get locked into that highest entry deal so thank you guys so much for all the love and all the support you guys are awesome for everything else on the store remember 10x does end on september 13th which i believe let me check my calendar here got a couple more days and then 10x entry for the whole store will be gone so thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys are awesome i'll catch you in the next video peace